Hello everyone, welcome to Conversations with Curtis. My name is Daniel Albu, and I'm an Israeli citizen. As you may or may not know, the terrorist organization Hamas attacked us last Saturday. I presume that you've also heard about the atrocities that took place at the music festival and in the surrounding area. We currently have over 1,300 civilians dead, and over 150 civilians kidnapped and over 5,000 wounded. And since last Saturday, we've had countless missile attacks with thousands of missiles launched at residential areas in Israel. Now, I reside in central Israel, so I have the luxury of having a minute and a half to get to a panic room before the missiles reach my area. But uh, people in southern Israel have 30 seconds or 15 seconds or less before the missile strikes. And, you know, I, I thought long and hard whether or not I should live stream today, apart from the technical aspects of what to do with the live stream in case there's a missile attack midstream. There is also the, the inner struggle of whether it's acceptable experience moments of joy during these uh, challenging times. That said, escapism is very important in this type of situation and is essential for everyone's mental health, especially children. And I also wanted to take a moment and thank everyone in the Conversations with Curtis community for your outpouring support and for reaching out and checking in with me. Uh, it warmed my heart and it really showed that this community is more than just a group of people who love adventure games. It's a support group filled with people who love adventure games. Um, anyway, today's donations will be transferred in full to the terror victims of Kibbutz Nilos, where a quarter of their residents were, are either dead or missing. Um, so that's that. If a siren sounds in my area during the live stream, I'm going to turn off my camera and mic and gather up my family in the panic room where we're supposed to stay for about five minutes. During that time, Sai and David will keep you entertained, hopefully. Um, that's it. Um, back to conversations with Curtis. I wanted to thank our Patreon members for their ongoing support and their monthly donations and also thank our coffee members with the top seven from the last 30 days on screen at the moment. And that's it. Sorry for being uh, uh, starting on a downer, but we'll move on to the main part of the show. So without further ado, let me introduce you to David Fox and Simon Stash. Hi, guys. Hey there. Hello. So, um, do you guys know this game? Either of you have you ever played it? Yeah, I've, I've 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 heard rumors about it. 
I have I I I have a shirt and that's probably all my only connection with it is the shirt that I'm wearing. But other than that, I don't you're, know. You're about. probably like those Gen Z kids that are wearing a Nirvana shirt, and then you can ask them, hey, name two songs by Nirvana. And they can't <laughs> name even one. So <laughs> you having a shirt doesn't say anything. We're we're gonna see how much you remember oh, from, from that game. Daniel, you're a savage today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're going to start off by um, talking about the, the contents of the, the big box of Zach McCracken. Now, I interviewed Steve Purcell two weeks ago, and I found out that he was the one who actually created the, the newspaper in full, right? Um, I actually don't remember that. I remember that. Um, our marketing guy, Doug Glenn, was probably running the project. Um, I don't, th I know that Steve didn't do the text for it. I think we hired someone, he hired someone outside to do all the copy for it. So maybe Steve did the illustrations for it. Yeah, he did all the illustrations. But the, the nice thing uh, about the newspaper, let, you know what, let me share the newspaper. Share it. MDQP tipped five dollars. Savage Daniel, you should how he crack the whip with Paul. I crack the whip. Just a sec. Let me show the newspaper itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have the newspaper. This is the newspaper. So my question about the newspaper is whether or not the plot for the game was already written by the time you wrote the newspaper or was it supposed to be, you know, was there any creative freedom when it came to the newspaper itself? No, the game was pretty close to being finished. So I think they must have, I think the intent was to make it fun to come up with a version of the National Inquisitor that Zach worked for, and also to provide a bunch of hints for people who might have gotten stuck in the game. So there's definitely material in the newspaper which could help you with some of the other things, like there's a bit with the egg I see right there at the bottom, mm -hmm. um, and overall story. And then um, some stuff which is off the wall, had nothing to do with what was in the game, but maybe taking some themes, like a th thing with the squirrel above. Well, you don't drink water from the squirrel, but that's kind of funny. Um, so it was really, you know, there was, this was back when we were figuring out how could you, how could you add some sort of copy protection without it feeling like copy protection and having extra things like the newspaper, would make the game feel like you know, I, I, it's worth it to buy it because this is going to be hard to get a copy of this. And back then we couldn't do, there were no PDFs and no, no easy way to scan stuff and send them to your friends. So this was having a hard copy would be the thing. Of course, the other piece was the um, security codes, mm -hmm. which was also, which was also part of it. I mean, we, when we, we had a pretty severe, first experience of piracy with our first two games and realized that we were being really naive by not having any protection or, or serialization in a, some of the review copies we passed out to a couple of people. Um, and they immediately both ended up on the BBSs at the time and in user groups and um, you know, like maybe half a year to a year before the games were actually released. So after that, we wanted to do something that was integrated but yeah you know, and also add a value to the game and how did you come up with the copy protection for the airport itself i mean in maniac mansion it was pretty obvious that you can place a, a room that you need copy protection to enter but how did you come up with using it at the I, airport i think or, i think we talked yeah I, I don't remember exactly I, mean, I think we must have we had the example from Maniac Mansion already, so we knew how to do that. Um, 
here it felt okay let's let's let the player play as much as they want as long as they're traveling around the u.s i think you only have the copy protection if you end up cj the 300 my gift to you the cwc family during those challenging times love wow. you all so much thank you very much cj for the 300 dollar wow. donation that's pretty amazing um so yeah we we figure okay this is a w good way to give you like a demo version of the game like a maniac mansion you could play as much as you want as long as you didn't go to one of the upper floors so that was pretty much how we did it and then i think the the thing that we did differently here I mean, maniac mansion if you blew it then the whole house would blow up i think if you yeah if you kept and, on. and with yeah. with zach mccracken you'd end up in pirate jail yeah, we, we wanted to kind of do a funny spin to it and lecture without making it seem really heavy. You know, because it was a there was also the possibility that the person just couldn't read the the symbols and made errors. So we didn't want to assume that they actually were pirating it. We kind of gave them the, the benefit of the doubt. But we also for if they were pirating it, we were we wanted to be able to say something. You know, I got to say that was cathartic writing those those lines because it made me think. Okay, this is what I wish I could have said to all the people that pirated Rescue on Fact with some ball blazer. So um, that was kind of fun. So I have a confession to make. Um, uh, Zach McCracken wasn't published in Israel, so I ended up in pirate jail quite a lot until <laughs> I actually got myself a copy of Zach McCracken imported from the US and then um, I redeemed myself by not ending up in pirate uh, channel. <laughs> Actually so, for me with the experience was completely different. I all LucasArts games had a better distribution than the Sierra games at the time. So I could actually get a copy way back then. So over here, even though LucasArts games were more popular, they were more popular from nineteen ninety on and so all of the LucasArts games from the 80s had to be imported and they cost like a hundred dollars each hundred dollars in 1990 money which is like i don't know 250 Yikes. nowadays <laughs> or a thousand i don't know how inflation works <laughs> so a lot of money let's just say that yep. it's just money <laughs> But once once games started getting published over here, we got uh, localized versions of the boxes themselves. Only Loom was uh, completely localized with the game itself being in yeah, Hebrew. with the box art and everything. I think you shared that no, before. Yeah, it's but amazing. the bo the box art uh, was always localized with the manual and the the artwork itself. But the game itself, only Loom was uh, localized. The rest of the games were in English which was essential for learning English. Yeah, there, I've, I've heard countless times from people saying they learned English by playing our games. Exactly. Because you always notice that in countries where movies, not just uh, animated movies, all of the movies are dubbed, then people don't know English that well because they don't have, they don't hear it anywhere. Usually the way you learn English as your second language, you need to hear it and then either read the subtitles in your native language or so when everything's dubbed, you, you can't learn the, the language. Um, I, my theory about why some of our games are way, way more popular in Europe than Sierra was because, you know, partly because we could do we didn't have a parser, which had to be translated. You just had the verb interface. So that meant all you had to really translate were, you know, like 16 or whatever verbs and and the text that was in the game. Where to translate a CR game, you also had to understand, you know, change the whole you know, parser, not just the words, but you know, like the probably the syntax and the you know, the use of verbs and a whole bunch of things like that. So it probably made it a much bigger barrier to entry. And again, Doug Glenn. Absolutely. Yeah. Doug Glenn was, you know, maybe he saw the 
the you know the the gap or the hole there and say okay we could do that and we started doing them pretty pretty early when we first started publishing our games and i think we got a foothold in europe before sierra did and we're in the united states sierra probably sold and south maybe, america as well south america yes sierra sold like maybe 10 copies of their game for everyone we sold in in the us but in other countries i think we did better than they did it was just so much easier we're talking about you know i remember when i had to do text parser sometimes i would have, I would not know specific the verb or the noun that i had to use so i had to do like 10 or 20 different tries and it was very frustrating as a kid because you know it was bilingual at the time but i still just didn't know much of anything so i had a lot of frustration with some of those games. I never remember the first time that I got to play Manic Mansion. Manic Mansion was the very first uh, LucasArts game that I actually got to play. Oh my goodness, that was like heaven for me because everything was there. And even if I didn't know something, which was usually the, the biggest thing when you're learning as a kid, um, you will just do what is. You just do what is and you would just do what is the entire screen. And it was just so fascinating because you would learn, oh, that's what it would call it. And I loved it personally. So. It's just that many mentioned at first it was very complicated because at first it's just like you know going from text parser to the point and click uh verse scheme and all that kind of stuff it was kind of like a big deal but i loved it and one of the things that made me fall in love with lucas art games was sack mccracken because that was one game that i could just like could not believe it you could travel everywhere you can do pretty much anything you can explore you can do a lot of different things at the time was the very first thing i absolutely loved it you can tell that i'm a big fan i'm actually super <laughs> excited to be here <laughs> wait show us the sushi necklace ah yes i have a dark short like i don't know if you can actually see so tiny but this is sushi they had a sushi she's so, here too for, and i did another know, for the people who haven't the played the with... zach mcreckon like david fox a sushi is a fa- <laughs> is Zach's fish, pet fish. That's right. The best pet for oh, Lucas Art. That's right. I said that. I'm sticking by it. I love that figure. Oh man! You know, since since we started the live stream here, you know, testing and everything, he's been showing that, and I kind of want that. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that it's like you, you can find that anywhere, but that's fun made. But at the same time, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Did you make the necklace yourself? I did. Well, I actually had a commission like this because I tried to, this is Miyuki and that's needed. This is very complicated. I tried and if it was made. So eventually what I did was just that I designed it and then I, I actually had an artist help me out so I could have it for the stream because there's no way and I was going to get that done before then. Well, since you both have all kinds of Zach memorabilia. I feel kind of left out because I don't have anything. <laughs> the The big box was thrown. I think everyone who lived through the 90s knew the phase in which they turned 15 and then they felt like computer games are for kids. I'm an adult now. And then by the time you reach 19 or 20, you regret the days when you threw out the big boxes of those classic adventure oh, games. Oh, don't say that. That's a, that's just painful to even listen to. I, I lost my boxes when I was traveling. Like when I moved, the first time that I got to move to the States, I lost so much in shipping. Like the boxes were completely destroyed and some of them were just completely gone. Like there was a specific box that had like Quest for Glory and had the Manic Mansion when it had other stuff. That box disappeared. Nobody knew what it was. I cried so much. You have no idea. Yeah. Nowadays, you get to see this stuff on eBay, and it's extremely expensive. Like, way too expensive. I think I was talking to about this with David a few months ago. Remember, David, that there was an article that said that Zach McCracken is one of the most valuable games of LucasArts. It is the gem. That's what the article called it. The gem, because uh, apparently it is one of the most expensive to find nowadays. Like, 700 and then something dollars. It was. Yeah, it was a lot. I, I've seen it's it. A lot of money. That made me a, cry even harder. <laughs> I've seen it for <laughs> over. I, I've seen it for over a thousand dollars or twelve hundred. Um, yeah, you know, I, I wish I only wish that I had the foresight and could have bought a crate of them, you know, at, at cost back in the day for the di- employee okay. discount. But 
I think wait, I have a wait. couple. How many sealed copies do you have? And what's your exact address? I, I think I might have, I don't know if they have any sealed copies. I think maybe one or two, three. I probably have one of each version that came out. Um, so, you know, FM Towns and Amiga or ST. And you know, so every time they came out with a new one, they would give, me, give us a free copy of it. And I, I guess maybe a couple of those are sealed because I don't think there'd be any reason for me to have opened those. Oh, there, and there's also the, is it the classic one? Is that included too? There's like one that had a, a bunch of games in it, like Indian and Maniac Mansion. So I have a bunch. There are closets so, downstairs. So you have the original uh, big boxes and you also have the LucasArts archive. Arc, I, it was a, a collection of adventure games. They had the LucasArts archives and they had volume one with the classic games like Maniac Mansion and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Zach McCracken, and you had, there was the second one with the newer games. Yeah, I mean, if, if we do a break during this, I can go downstairs and see if I can pull out the things from the shelf and bring them up. But I don't, I'm not going to sell them. You know, maybe I'll give them, maybe that'll pay for my grandchildren. You just, grandkids. Get a, you just get to look at it. That's it. Yeah, you just yeah, it's, get it's, to I'm, look at I'm it. I'm proud. And maybe, maybe my grandkids will use it as inheritance or something. So. <laughs> But it's great that you mm-hmm. kept them sealed. You know, keeping games sealed is something that nowadays seems pretty obvious, especially with eBay and us knowing that sealed copies are much more valuable. But how did you yeah, I, keep I, them sealed I, back in the I 80s? don't. I don't actually know if they're sealed. I know some of them are probably, and some probably aren't. Okay. I was probably too anxious to, see, to look at the... Uh, you know the, the inquisitor newspaper to see to keep it closed up i do have some sealed thimbleweed parks though <laughs> well it's uh, it was released in 2017 we all knew that sealed copies are valuable yeah e- even right. with the limited run games every time someone i know buys a copy it's not just one copy they buy one copy for themselves and then three copies for as a future proofing their pension fund. <laughs> I I feel bad when I just came back from um, the GIC conference in Poland last week and someone gave me a copy of was it Thimbleweed Park to sign that was sealed and he unsealed it in order for me to sign it. I said, Are you really sure you want to unseal that? Um it's gonna be more valuable if you don't. And um, they say no, nope. so I felt I felt bad. <laughs> this the trade off was he didn't want me to sign on the plastic, but on well, the usually box. when when they ask people to sign the boxes and unseal them, they also make a video of the unsealing itself to as proof that it was unsealed by the original creator of the game. Daniel thinks like mm. a content creator at all times. I would have yeah. never thought about doing a video, man. I would not like unseal it either. But... <laughs> I got a, a sealed copy of Fantasy Magora that um, I, I got just for the unsealing video, which I'll eventually make. So I think it's time to actually play the game. So we'll switch to this view and have Sai will tell us in a moment when was the first time she played Zach McCracken. Oh my goodness. That was a very long time ago. You don't have to mention the the exact year. I don't want to mention the year. (laughs) So long time ago. I was a kid. Daniel, I'm trying to figure out how to work this out. Don't worry. We'll get there. Just a sec. Give control. It took me a lot of tries to get Sagman Kraken right at first. Uh, I remember the first time that I got to see the game. It was my brother, my late brother, playing the game. And uh, it was so funny because I just, I looked at it for like five minutes and I was in love with the game. And I can't remember that I was asking like all sorts of questions. Like, what is this? What are you doing? What is that? How do you do that? And I was fascinated with it. And I remember one day he, I don't remember where he went. He was in home. So I stayed and I was like at his computer and I tried to play myself. 
And oh my goodness, I I kept running out of money. I kept like completely stuck in places. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I was having the fun of my time, like the time of my life in there. And eventually, it took me a while to be able to just get anywhere because I didn't know what I was doing. It was hard for me to eventually, you know, after playing it so many times, I found out that the phone, like a uh, sex mom usually gives you hints. And that's an easier way for you to get into it, like, get, you know, what to do next. I didn't know what to do. So I would just go back to the apartment and I would call sex mom and she would always be like, oh, she's a very nice lady. Go ahead and go talk to her and stuff like that. And it was so much fun because I, at first, you know, as a kid, I did not know anything about game development or game design or anything. Um, so, you know, it, it was like a whole learning curve for me. And it was so much fun. Well, let's see how much you remember. Let me just maximize Well, the chances are I've played this game. This is one of the LucasArts games that I've played the most. But as we're playing right now, the pressure of being live and everything, I don't I don't even I can't even get stuck to work. No worry, being live is that's nothing. that's where we're going. That's how things are going right now. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what makes live stream so interesting. Okay. So you've got control, you can click resume. And we'll watch the intro. I love the intro in all the versions. Come on, you can do it. I did it. I'm doing the clicking. <laughs> well done. There we go. Technical difficulties at the authenticity experience. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for making me feel this horrible. So the interesting thing about the intro is that it's different in some of the versions, if not the intro itself, the, the order of the scenes. Is that true, David? The order of the scenes, you said? Yeah. The, the FM Towns version is different. Yeah. Oh, I never played the FM Towns. I have the Steam copy. I, I bought Cyberpunk. Well, the Steam copy is the FM Towns copy. No, but you can change it. You can switch it to the enhanced one. Did you know that? You can enhance I, it to the to the other one. I've never played the FM Towns. I'm FM trying Towns to keep one. things authentic, and I always play the definitive versions of the game. So EGA and Commodore 64 for me. Oh, OK. Not like you youngsters with your enhanced versions and your 256 colors. Live by pixely colors learn. <laughs> I love them. I think they also got a, got rid of the alone, in bed alone again from the FM Towns version. I think that got cut. I've seen the version. I think it looks really nice. It's just like, I. This is probably a very personal opinion, but I'm not a big fan of the sex apartment. I feel like they changed so many things. What happened? What happened? Did you click something, Sai? I didn't click <laughs> Don't worry. We'll be right back after no. these messages. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Don't worry. It's I should just have I should have mentioned that. I should it's... have mentioned that at the beginning of the stream. Like, if anything breaks, you guys, it's most likely my fault. It's it's a chance for us to <laughs> listen to the awesome intro music again. So, I, David, who came up with the music? Um, music was done by Matthew Kane, who is also my um, co-designer on the game and did the um, 
Um, That's not me. Did a lot of the scripting. Mm -hmm. And he's a musician, composer. And so he, I had no idea what I wanted. Um, I think this was a pretty early, early attempt. He said, okay, I think I got it. And he played it for us. Remember a recording of it from, you know, with much better synthesizers um, from, from the um, keyboard that he had and played it back on the big speaker stereo system in the common room in the stable house at the ranch and listening to it was i remember it being dark I said wow i like this this is really good so um i think he has the original version on online on his website if you ever want to check that out that's awesome you know i i had a tape recorder when i was a kid and so i recorded the zach theme song from my PC speaker to a tape and listen to it all day. Okay, so si, you're on. Um, there we go. I'm guessing. So I remember the very first thing that I would do. Said I will. What is the entire room? Look at that. See who this is? Sushi and fish bowl. I had to say that the what is verb was the toughest one for me because you'd use what is to find out about what? something usually in a dark room and then you'd need to use another verb and that verb didn't let you know what you you're pointing to... at you have to click it yeah you you basically i remember that both manic mention and sack making what you do is that you have to construct basically like a construct kind of sentence it wasn't only until like monkey island that i believe um we actually get a little bit more of an intuitive system when it comes to the point and the clicking. But other than that, so I'm just gonna pick everything I see. So people are are saying uh, that the colors are very different from the Amiga version. They are very different from the DOS version as well because Zach, um, Zach's skin color was the same as the wall, and so if you'd walk in front of the wall, you just see Zach's eyes. So the Commodore 64 version is the definitive version for me and for David. <laughs> Excuse you? Excuse you, sir. <laughs> you kids What's and your enhanced thing? versions. Come on. What's my thing? <laughs> Anything above oh. four colors is too much. By the way, this is the first time that I got to learn what the heck was Kisu. I didn't even know that a word existed. It's yeah, me neither. <laughs> Me neither, and <laughs> I didn't know where he was. when my my cousin came from the U.S., he got me a kazoo, so that I finally know what a kazoo is. Ooh, I already <laughs> can see now. So this is the lamp, right? I I remember that I used to put sushi in the lamp. Yeah, you I don't do think that. I can turn on the lamp. I don't think I can turn on the phone yet. Can I? Because I, I have to pay the bill. I guess. 
I know I can. Let's see. You, turn, you turned on the, the recording machine, right? The answering machine, so. sorry. Well, but that's that's the first time you get to hear the mom. And she's she's kind of cool because she gives you hints. There are any messages. My mom doesn't love me. What the heck? Okay, let me go back to this drawer. Where's the bill? I forgot all things. Nope. You, you can also <laughs> close the curtain. That's right. There is the bill, isn't it? See, this is one of the things that, you know, it kind of... It's kind of trippy that you actually have to go back to what it is for you to be able to scan everything. And then you can actually do the sentence again. You can actually pick up the veil. And you can, even my you, dogs are the, so the, excited. Before the live stream started, David asked how how far can we, can we get in the game in two hours? So with a sign charge, I don't think we'll manage to leave this room. So <laughs> that's what they hate, Daniel. <laughs> so they I, I gotta say, I, I gotta say that I I loaded a lot of stuff into this room, figuring this is kind of like the tutorial room, and you want to be able to exercise all your verbs and try out all, all sorts of different things and get a lot of wins before you even leave. So you know, lots of interactivity that is not really game related, but just so people can test the user interface. And maybe really only one one puzzle in this room. Oh, I know did you get? The, did you get the? If you close that drawer. Yeah. Do you know what's behind drawer number one, Sai? Come try it. Lag is killing me right now. I'm confused and confused in life, and I'm confused with the lag. <laughs> but yeah. I don't think I can reach it, can I? I have to. No, don't worry. And... Millions of, of people are watching at the moment, <laughs> watching you struggle with the first Thank room. Thank you. Thank you in for reminding me of that. You've played countless times. Like... <laughs> You're being a me. <laughs> Okay, I don't remember what else we have to do here, so we're just going to go ahead to the living room. I love the fact that you, uh, David, I love the fact that you predicted the, the extensive use of credit cards back in 1987. Yeah. 1987, yeah, 88. No, 87 is when you worked on the game, so you had to right. write the game. Yep. So... really wanted this noise to be obnoxious sounding. It really frightened me as a kid. So, when we played on the PC speaker. I think you've been hanging around the machine too long. So the interesting about uh, the interesting thing about uh, this part, the fact that he had cutscenes in the middle of an action, which was you leaving the room, was something that you later changed by having cutscenes start when you actually either travel or without cutscenes actually stopping. An action mid mid action. Yes. You know, Joseph Austin wrote in the chat and he's right, don't worry, Sai, you're not struggling nearly as much as Paul and he's running this channel. Sorry, I'm I'm concentrating. I didn't know what you just said. I said that Joseph Austin wrote in the chat, don't worry, Sai, you're not struggling nearly as much as Paul, and he's running this channel. I don't remember. Where is the controller? It's, it's somewhere here, right? There we go. So it's, it's like here. So what do I do? Like move it? 
can't remember anymore. Well, let me know if you want hints. I do remember this part. <laughs> I'm nervous. What can I say? Who's sick? Yeah, that's me right now. Like, what am I doing again? Don't, don't be, don't be nervous. Got How it, can so. I not? Have you ever seen me live stream me doing art or something? Like, I hate being watched. I'm doing this because David is here. <laughs> that's <laughs> why I agreed to be here. <laughs> I cannot be the only person, right? People from the chat, please say something. Like I cannot be the only person that feels extremely stressed no out during a live stream. Hang on a sec. Oh, you know, and no, it's not working. Of course, David, David no, for on. example, he's talking in conferences, <laughs> which I presume is pretty nerve wracking. Of course, it's not going to work because I haven't plugged it in yet. Well played. So now the the, the TV is plugged. Wow, in. this this with lag is is something else. I'm not gonna lie. Like whoa. You know hey. the, the fact that you're playing it over Zoom gives you the authentic experience from 1988 because the computers <laughs> were lagging back then. So. Wow, you you were thinking of everything. Yeah. No, no, wait, okay, I, the clicking is, so I'm not supposed to. No, you're supposed to use the remote control. I am trying. <laughs> Yes. Turn on remote control. I don't remember what I I've used. Remote He's even uh, telling you use the remote control. Just use and double click. You're not using the remote that. control. There you go. Use the remote control with remote control. Are you mad at me, Dave? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> this is this is David, uh, uh, creating a tutorial phase in the game. <laughs> Which is a great game design because back then games wouldn't let you, um, they would basically let you figure out everything by yourself or expect you to read the manual. He looks very familiar, of course, because you trapped the button. Yeah. I feel self love Gibson for everyone. I know, right? Like, I feel like, damn. <laughs> you got it, Sai. You got it. <laughs> Melissa, China. I read somewhere, David, that everyone was inspired in someone else. Like Melissa, I think, I'm not sure if it was Melissa or Leslie, that they were also inspired in someone else's partner as well. Is that true? Yeah. So Melissa was named after Ron Gilbert's girlfriend at the time, who nice. whose, name was, whose name was Melissa, and she was living in China for a while. So that's where we got Melissa China. <clears throat> and Leslie was Matt's girlfriend, Matthew's girlfriend. And Leslie had a little in joke. She kept on changing her hair color. Like every time, you know, every few weeks she'd come in, she was at one of our testers. So she come in, she come in with different hair color, like wildly different. So that's, if you take her helmet off, when you meet her in Mars, you'll see their hair keeps on changing color. Yeah, it kept on changing. I always wonder about that. Yeah, that was like a little in joke. I think that was more for her and for for Matthew than for for the players. It's like what? Um, and then Annie Annie Laris was my wife's maiden name, and so that was named after her. I I didn't know about. It. 
but I wasn't sure about the other two. Everybody's talking from... about my dogo. Yeah, that's that's my dogo in the back. Well, it's oh, great because four. this version doesn't have any ambient sounds, so your dogs are providing the ambient sounds for the game. <laughs> there is a dog in every scene. This is a very special set of Kraken version. You know, I, I remember when I when I played Zach McCracken in the eighties and we we watched the Academy Awards one day and George Lucas was presenting an award and I always I wondered why isn't he talking about Zach McCracken? <laughs> I, know I, think it's, I think it's important to notice one of the comments. I'm, I'm trying to check out the YouTube chat. Stupidity mm -hmm. epidemic. Are you sure this game isn't taking place in 2020? That's something that I think we've talked about to David so many times. Like he could just predict the future with this game. Yeah. Quite honestly. You predict the, the, the use of credit cards. You predicted stupidity. <laughs> it is insane how up to speed that is. Where is the... How can I... Wait, I, I have a question I'd... for for you, Sai. And did you have a garbage disposal over there when you were a kid? No, no. This was this yeah. was so that was the first. I think that was the first way for me to kill sushi. Oh. The first, <laughs> so I didn't know at all. I, so I think that? that's a. It doesn't a, exist. So mostly America. in the yeah, United States, it's pretty yeah. common, but outside the United States, it's not. Yeah. So how are we supposed to to solve that puzzle? David, without it costing twenty dollars, you figure out what what is a garbage disposal. You test it with sushi. <laughs> oh my goodness! Let me let me turn off the. I forgot to turn off the TV. So how exactly do I remove the pipe again? I can't remember. You 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 don't have what you need yet. How would you do it? Monkey wrench, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Monkey that was is a, yeah. That was the worst one for me. Like I had no idea whatsoever what that meant. My brother was like, "Just do it, just do it." Don't ask, just do it. I was that like, okay? So I solved this puzzle by using everything on everything. I solved monkey wrench by using everything on everything. This is my um. Lessons in ecology. Like he won't leave with the refrigerator open or the water turned on. Wow, yeah, I remember that now. And that's another thing you predicted correctly because back in the 80s, no one cared. I can't remember. It's empty, right? But I have. I don't remember how I look at it. Like, is that what it is? Open. Oh, that's right. See, <laughs> I'm playing newer games or, too much. Do you have to use? But I completely forgot. It? I guess the key you have. See, David, you remember more than you thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just didn't remember sushi. <laughs> David's. Famous first words when we opened the game was, why should she has four eyes? That was fantastic. I don't I didn't pick up anything, did I? No, because the mailbox is empty, it seems. So there there's an Easter egg on that scene. Which scene? Look at, Which one? Look, Which Easter walk egg? Back, walk back to well, you can see it there, um, the address above Zach's. Oh, the 5858? Yeah. What's that? That's the address of Skywalker Ranch. Ooh. And we were, it was supposed to be secret, but we would stick 5858 out everywhere in games because we weren't supposed to. There's a lot of references in LucasArts games that I love. Like, even though it's of today, I keep on learning. 
Let's do the bakery thing first. Everybody loves this part. Yep. It's so good stuff. The bakery. You see, people did know about the 5858, David. Uh, are you looking? I, I should open another window. Where are you looking? Is that in the well, Twitch you can, stream? You can open the, um, the YouTube um, page of this live stream. Mute it so that you won't hear us uh, in delay. And then you'll be able to see the chat on the right. I should do that. So 5858 wow. Lucas Valley Road is the Skywalker Ranch address. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> well, it's in the chat now, so yeah, not your fault. So people in the chat, if you have, uh, now that David is in the chat, if you have any questions for David, you can write them and then we'll read them out loud. We do have a question for David. I don't know yeah, that, sigh, I sigh from the chat. What's your question? David, if you had <laughs> something that you could have done differently for Zach McCracken, what would, have, what would that be? Like if you had that one thing that you could have, I don't know, removed or done differently or... Well, we learned a lot over the years. At the time, I don't know if I would have done anything differently, but if I were to do it now or 10 years later, um, we learned about not having dead ends. Um, I think I think there was kind of the assumption that these games should last about 30 hours, you know, maybe a dollar per hour of gameplay. Um, if you paid 30 bucks for the game or 40 bucks, you should get 30 or 40 hours. Um, so the idea that you could end up with a dead end just meant, oh, that's more gameplay. You have to start over and you get more time on it. And over the years, we decided, well, that was too frustrating for people. And it'd be better if we could have a game where you didn't have to worry about doing something early that would, if you didn't do something early on, then it would be impossible to complete the game later. Um, I don't know that that really happened until Monkey Island. Um, I think that's probably. It um, did in Maniac Mansion, though. Maniac Mansion, there were a lot of moments as well that I felt very. Yeah, uh, we usually would. I mean, the one thing we did do from starting from Maniac Mansion was telegraph a death. Like if you're there's something you're about to do which could kill you, um, we would talk about it or you know either it'd be an obvious thing that would kill you or we would try to um warn you you know, save the game before you do that kind of thing so it became more of a joke um <laughs> but but later on but with zach i mean like in jumping out of the airplane without a parachute probably not a good idea um can you actually do that do we stop you from, or, or he just says no i don't want to do it I can jump from the airplane. No, you can't. Yeah. Um, but you could you jump out of the airplane. If you don't have a sp two things with you, then you would still die. So you know, we, that was okay. Death was okay, just not arbitrary. Um, so I, I probably would change that to for modern players because they don't like that. They don't like to be frustrated as much. And probably fewer mazes um that was like having a magic new ability Wait, I'm, missing to have... something. Hmm? I'm missing something i'm missing the knife where's the knife again yeah the knife we've been waiting yeah, I'm missing for you the to knife. find the knife and do you remember the puzzle you need the knife for i know daniel you're supposed to help me <laughs> now you see I you're said... a natural an hour in and See, I... david 
David was worried back in the 80s that Zack couldn't provide 40 hours of gameplay, so he added dead ends and mazes. While we we just witnessed you um, hanging around one room for one hour, so we just needed 40 rooms, <laughs> and you got 40 hours of gameplay. That's right. I pick up the toolbox from Luz, and then I can actually have to bend the thing. So <laughs> another thing, that. another thing you predicted, David, was the fact that phones are are the thing that is making us dumber, <laughs> which is also true. I did not predict cell phones, though. Yeah, um, but phones in, gen so in general. Right. Well, you know, you realize that cell phones are, are so we, you know, it was our solution to get away from that 60 cycle hum from the aliens. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm, uh I'm not. I'm not looking at all the, were there any questions in the chat that I should be answering? I don't see any questions so far. Okay. Nope. I, I can't We're getting live down on commentary. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. If it's really that bad, I can go downstairs and get them outside. No, we, <laughs> you know, we can't the doggers? The dog. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, Zoom's noise reduction technology, it's really, it's really advanced. If they can hear it, they're going to know what to do. I have four rescue dogs. There's one right here that you can't see because I think of the camera, but he's right here. How exactly do I get the, do I use the full thing? I don't even remember how I get this thing from down here. Wait, people can't see it in the layout that we're currently on, but do you have we the go. letters Psi in the back over there? Yes. Do they actually sell them? Aww. Or, or did you Thank buy them? Thank you! That's a very sweet comment. That I'm, I'm so charming that I can't play this game. <laughs> people <laughs> are too nice to me, I swear. Did you read what's yes, on the Yes, the letters, I bought them individually. You have to understand what a name like Sai. I my name is never on keychains, is never anywhere. So I basically have to create the things that I want to see. So yeah. Do I have to turn it on? Is is that the thing? Is the answer on the shit? That doesn't seem to work. That's my favorite. Your hammerhead friend. Uh, said don't forget the wallpaper piece oh well, that's right i'm going to start getting uh, the phone calls after i pay the bill but I, I need my outfit and you also have the the puzzle the wallpaper piece the thank knife. you see hammerhead is being nicer to me than you are see you're me <laughs> Okay, let me see. I completely forgot about it. Yeah, that's right. That's what I used to, to, to draw the, the map. Whoops. And the fun thing is that when I was a kid, I remember that well, you would just scan the entire room and basically just try combinations of the things that you had in there. And that was the, the biggest part of the fun when you were trying to figure out what to do in specific scenarios way back then. Yeah, and again, it's a great way to learn English because unlike Sierra games, where you could write look tree and it would understand what you're trying to say without it being grammatically correct, over here, you'd actually see the entire sentence. Use key on door, turn on answering machine or whatever. It was so much like, it was so much less frustrating. I really can't explain the joy that I had playing Maniac Mansion the first time. I didn't finish it. I think I finished uh, Sackbook Rocker first. Didn't get to finish uh, Maniac Mansion at the time. But 
it was so much fun being able to feel a little bit more agency when I was actually playing. Oh yeah, buddy. Scythe, do you remember where the credit card is? I picked it up. Okay. I see. I picked it up. See, you beat me. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there's a poster here. This was before they did the whole thing. I remember uh, one of my favorite uh, references is here that they had a Vanya Clinton poster, but I think this is an enhanced version. This here, it's not here. I thought there used to be another poster here. Is that in the arcade? That isn't, no, that isn't the arcade in Vanya Clinton. There, there, there but was it was a, a Star Wars poster. It was a Star, a Star Wars poster on the Manic Mansion arcade room. And here there was just no poster. I guess. There was, the FM there was a... versions. Right. Like, no, the enhanced version. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, how do I go? How do I do this? Okay. There we go. Show me what you want to buy. So Joseph Austin. Um mentioned something that I was just about to ask you about. For anyone who doesn't know, Sai is more than a fan. She was a big part of the Kickstarter resurgence back in, back around 2015 with Phoenix Online. I haven't heard it mentioned. Mentioned. Yeah, I don't, I mean, we're having fun. I want to talk more. <laughs> I work with Jin Jensen. And a bunch of other people. Uh, let's see. Actually, I what I'm interested see. in is uh, your LucasArts Doodles, which just celebrated their one year anniversary. That's right. Yeah. I've been drawing for a whole year nonstop. It's been quite an adventure. How how do I pick up things here before we move Sound on? Excited. I can't remember. I, I'm just <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> How do I pick up things? How do I select that? I forget everything. <laughs> I'm going to click by. <laughs> oh, there's a hat and there's a... Yes, I... Th well, the thing is that um, I started Doodle O'Clock last year. And what I did is that it was, it was kind of difficult because it was born from grief. My brother passed away uh, you know, a couple of years ago. And he was one of the person that got me into, you know, with the Star Games. And he was the one that bought most of the games. And uh, way back then, that was the way that I used to uh, have to bond with him. So um, in therapy, one of the things that we started talking about was like, you know, trying to reconnect with things that I love because, you know, once you go through grief and you go through depression and all these things, uh, you disconnect with a lot of things that, you know, you once loved or had any kind of meaning to you. Um, so I started drawing again and it just, I just kept on going for like a whole year drawing stuff and it was it was kind of like an overlap because it was not just that I got started doing you know like Halloween kind of stuff because at first it was spook show when I started in, in October I started drawing as well uh with the release of Return to Monkey Island I started doing a lot of Monkey Island doodles like a lot I was really into it mostly because uh Return to Monkey Island had a lot of negative feedback at first because of the choices made when it comes to art direction and I thought that was incredibly unfair I did go through something kind of similar when we were launching uh, Gabriel Knight since of the fact of the remake mm -hmm. a lot of people were very unhappy with the fact that it was not pixel art so it, it resonated with me and I think the thing that hurt the most was when I saw Ron Gilbert make that post saying like okay you know what i'm not going to give you more more updates i'm not going to give you any more information was ahead like he was so upset and it kind of hurt so i started drawing a lot of monkey island stuff and for almost like six seven months i think i did for a very long time i started doing a lot of that and um it was something that helped me 
reconnect a little bit more with my love for LucasArts because I always loved LucasArts. It's just that, you know, since I work with like Sierra games, I always used to talk just Sierra games. You know, with, I uh, believe it or not, I have a hard time putting myself out there, like personally, so to speak. So I rarely ever do. So I've, I've tried a little bit, like I think I talked with David about this to jumpstart joy. That's basically the idea behind most of my doodles to help me reconcile, you know, with loss and try to transform all that grief and all that pain into, you know, celebrating the things I love instead, which is, uh, it sounds easy, but it's hard for me. It's very hard sometimes. It's just try to detach yourself from that sadness and, you know, try to concentrate a little bit into that. Well, first of all, kudos to you for actually finding the motivation every day to work on these doodles because, you know, I, I had a project in which I created one game per month and I always got to the point where it was either the last day or the day before the last and I'd start working on the game because I didn't do anything at the beginning of the month. So finding motivation every day and not just motivation, inspiration. Yeah. What you're going to draw today. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I play by ear. But in that case, it's just like, uh, it's more like an exercise of discipline because, you know, I, I live with chronic pain, so I don't really feel creative. I don't really feel like motivation, like I guess most people do. So in my specific way, it's more like trying to allow myself to have a little bit of space to... Um, to create and some days I hate it some days I think it's just like the worst thing I've ever done and some days I think well that's okay that's not so bad how can I give it to him I want to I don't want to stab him <laughs> you spent butter knife mm. I'm trying to well, I'm just gonna without the fire window thing. I think are you in the wrong window? Uh, yeah, there is a buy in the cell window. Oh there it is. See, I blame Daniel for distracting. Yeah, blame me, no problem. <laughs> oh my goodness. I've never I've never played this like this before. It's just quite the experience. He's telling you, you gotta it. go to the cell window. Well, I am at the cell window. Oh, no, that's, that's the buy window. Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Is this also an American thing? No. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is, this is Daniel's this so indignant. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> like, um, th this, this, is, this is probably came from the same impulse to have a really nasty flight attendant on the airplane. Um, and just like, you know, so, too many rules about how you could do things. So, you know, here's the, this is the, we definitely have a um, order window and a pickup window at restaurants sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to the counter, you have to order here, you have to go over there to pick up. So I think yeah. that's where it came from. So that's about it, right? Or can I buy the guitar too? I don't need the guitar. I know I did. I do need the guitar. See, I even forgot about meeting the king. I'm not going to get there. <laughs> I'd like to believe that I'm going to. Can I play the guitar? Yes, I can. This is another one. It's this one. Wow. Well, there's... So David, did they actually tell you at LucasArts, hey, make the puzzles extra difficult so that we'll sell more hint books or get money for the hint line? No. I don't think there was a hint line at the time we made the game. I think that came a little bit afterwards. Um, there, there was Initially, there was a customer support line where people would call up for help. Mm -hmm. And then I think we realized we could do hint books. And then we, I remember... 
um, Judith, who was in charge of a lot of the customer support or technical support, ended up um, programming the phone tree system. And then I guess they monetized that. But no, we, we were just doing stuff that we thought would be fun. And how would how would you determine if a, a puzzle was too easy or just the right amount of difficult? Um, if it was too hard, we would probably get feedback during from the testers initially, um, and we might add more hints. Then we probably didn't cut the puzzle; we might have just added some more support around what to do. But probably not a lot of that. So, so that's the origin because there are a lot of times in LucasArts games in which you do so, you try to do something and then the the lead character or some other character in the game is telling you what you need to do exactly. Like in this situation where Zach told you you need to go to the cell window, the cell. He didn't let you figure it out by yourself. He yeah, told you well, what to do. And that was probably because it just seemed that shouldn't really be a puzzle. That would just be something that seemed frustrating. If if this were real life, you probably could see the signs more easily and you would just do it. So I think you don't want to make a puzzle out of something which you should be able to just naturally do in real life. But like, you know, how do you get behind the counter here would not be something you would normally do in real life. Um, you probably be blocked. So that that's a great puzzle to figure that out. Meteor Fright is asking question for David. For Zach, when you finished the final version, it shipped, and that was it. What's the question? Well, when probably when did you finish the final version that shipped? I mean, for example, yesterday, yeah, yesterday people celebrated. Um, just a sec. Give me control for a sec. Let me just turn it, mute it, so that I'll be able to talk. Okay. Um, yeah, you got control sign. Um, so, for example, yesterday people on Twitter celebrated the fact that it was Monkey Islands. 33rd birthday. And so back in the day, release dates weren't that accurate. I mean, you can't celebrate on October 15th Monkey Island's birthday because it was probably you guys had a, a master disc date in which you guys actually sent it to the publisher. And then there was another week in which things were actually sent out to the stores. And so when you actually try to celebrate an anniversary for a game, which of these dates, if any, yeah, they, they, you use? It's, it, it's really a fiction. There really isn't a date. So we're just going with what, what the fans say. Um, exactly what you said. It's like, you know, we, you, go through the whole process of, of getting it shipped, getting it, getting, getting it, getting the, uh, the gold master sent off and, and then it goes to the manufacturer, then the manufacturer does it. And I don't think they have like, Oh, coming on November 1st is a new game from Lucasfilm games. You know, that I don't remember that ever happening. It was just in the stores when they were, as soon as they can get them in the stores and usually in the fall in time for holiday season. Yeah, when so, I read old computer game magazines, it's actually pretty vague, like coming fall 1990 or coming winter yeah. 1990. Well, and the and the magazines had a uh, were, were locked down three months before they came out, also. So you had the combination of, you know, the possibility of the game slipping, um, and I guess the magazine wouldn't want to have given a date that was not going to be accurate, and the fact the magazines were printed you know, way after the time the stories came out. So it was, it was nothing was a, you know, we didn't have anything digital at the time. So you really couldn't just say, here's the release date. 
but yeah. you know, we knew we knew maybe roughly within a month or two of when it came out. I remember yeah. I used to celebrate Loom's anniversary in January because I found a computer game magazine that said coming coming late January 1990. And eventually mm-hmm. I found out that they didn't hit that release date and it was released in March, I think, mm. or April. Yeah, it was hard, hard to, to get that. There was a, what was the other question I didn't answer? Um, so when, when you finished the final version, um, so I think I remember finishing Zach so, okay, early on, when you were the project leader of a game, you ended up getting it out there. But then probably for the next year, you were involved with ports, either managing ports or making sure they, they were accurate or or translations or you know, all sorts of other things. So you kind of were stuck in the world of the game for like a year or so after it was released. And by the time that stuff was over, you it was really nice to be done with the game because you really want, I mean, ideally you'd be done with the game when it first shipped, but that's not the case. Then at, at some point, um, probably sometime after Zach, or maybe starting around Zach, we started getting producers who could actually carry a lot of that responsibility afterwards and we could go on to the next project or, or priority-wise, like, you know, after... Soon after Zach, we jumped on to Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which was a really high priority. And we have three three designers on that at the same time. It was me, Noah Fossey, and Ron Gilbert. And we were freed up from all our other responsibilities, so we could just focus on that. And they had to bring other people in to do it. So that's probably how Doug Crockford worked on the FM Towns version and why I wasn't involved with the you know, Amiga ST and VGA versions of Zach, um, other than you know, you know, quick, oh yeah, that looks good, kind of thing. Um, I, I really wasn't giving a lot of feedback. So um, generally, that's a good thing, um, unless you love the game so much that you want to spend the rest of your life <laughs> doing ports and revisions and other versions of it. So if that answers the question. Question is, did you actually find a bug after a game was released? And yeah, that and that a game breaking bug. Yes, sometimes I don't remember specifically. Um, that was much more difficult, obviously, than it is now, where you just have a new version that people can download. Back then, you had to go through, um, you know, gold master process and or patch discs and then have have those fully tested and then have to pay to ship them out to all the customers that already bought a disc or that that asked for one. Um, so it was like a huge problem if you ended up with a bug afterwards. Then you have to decide, okay, is this bug worth fixing or should we just worry about it for the next version we do? And um, I don't remember anything specific for Zach. They're, they're probably, I mean, you. but true for any game I've ever worked on, the difference of having, you know, a handful of testers um, or maybe later on dozens of testers to having thousands or hundreds of thousands of people playing the game, you're going to find all sorts of edge cases that we never imagined. And there's always going to be something that pops up. And what'd you do in that case? Ignore them? You decide how much of a blocker it is. You know, if they really truly can't finish the game, um, maybe you do a patch for that person and for future for versions. For that specific person? Possibly. I mean, you might do it for the person, send them out a patch or save game to get past that point. Um, or you might, and, and for future builds, you would do it, but you wouldn't go back and give discs, send discs to the entire customer base. Um, so it might have been in like a super rare occurrence, like they got into some mode that no one else ever did before. 
Um, but I think that sounds familiar, like, you know, being able to create a save game with, with a place after that, or maybe a, a, a fix for them. But yeah, but a save game really won't weird. actually get them to the same location right. they were with the same inventory. They just yeah, that, well, I, I don't remember part. this. I mean, I'm thinking what we would do, what we could have done. I don't remember actually doing that. Um, that might have been something they sent us. Maybe they sent us in the save game and we patched it and sent it back to them. It's hard to remember. I'm not sure. Hey, Sai, did you notice I did some reverse psychology on you? Me and David were talking. Just to put you at ease without you noticing that you're still on stream with millions of people watching. <laughs> Wait, so you, so you said that you finished the game, finished Zach before you finished the uh, Maniac Mansion. No. How many years did it take you to finish Maniac Mansion? The oh, thing about Maniac inside. Mansion is that, no, yeah, the thing about Maniac Mansion is that it, it was, <sighs> the combinations were kind of hard at first, right? It was, it was hard for me to get the hang of it. I don't know why I found Maniac Mansion in a way a little bit more complicated i i think it was from atm atm machine it's got ATM machine, yeah. it was, i was stuck i was talking to him recently and we were talking he mentioned that you can actually finish the game just with one character you can just finish with bernard i think i didn't even know that like it's been like there's so many things still about these games that i'm learning notice that we didn't do many other games where you had to choose a whole bunch of different characters um, to do it. That, that was, um, I don't think we were aware of how complicated that would make testing to make sure that any combination of, of kids that you choose would still let you win the game. Um, you know, with, with Zach, it was, you're locked, you could switch characters, but you're locked down to the four that you have. Um, having that variable just geometrically increase the complexity of the testing and, the, and bug fixing. Uh, oh, there we go. The lag Wait. here is killing me. <laughs> it took me a while to... Wait a sec. Okay. So this was another puzzle for... How old was I? Six, six year old kid who didn't know any English. The fact that you had to use the credit card, which I don't, didn't know what that was on whatever that thing was, which was the cash card reader. So again, in these games, I'd usually use everything on everything and hope for the yeah. best. This was. Um, Wait, what happened? Asked, oh my goodness! You got off. Well, that's a great people. chance to listen to the kazoo. <laughs> this, this was a. This whole sequence with the bus was, the the bug that kept on coming back to haunt me throughout the entire production cycle. So what was the bug exactly? It was just the complication of of having Zach and Annie there and where they should both get on and pay for both or having enough cash and not having enough cash or having them fall asleep too fast or, um, you know, it, it was just, there's so many, I think by the, I thought it would be really simple. I wanted to make it feel realistic, but by, by trying to make it accurate, it just became enormously complex and, you know, it's probably spaghetti code where you end up with all these different 
um, patches and fixes. And if this situation, then do that. And you know, if I if if I were to redo the game, you'd walk up to the bus and you'd just get on. <laughs> All the other stuff would just be automatic. Okay, let me let me just mute because people can't hear what we're saying. Okay. You, know, you should do the next part because this the next part that we have right now it is the, the it is the airplane protection. and that is a well that too but we have a this is the I think this is the one and only timed uh puzzle that we have in the game so where the lag is going to be a big deal. <laughs> oh, are you talking about gonna, you, are you talking about the airplane the egg the peanuts and stuff yeah yeah. And you know what? I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. Where should we go, David? Have you been? We haven't been to Seattle yet, right? We haven't been anywhere. I guess Seattle. Awesome. Do we have? Have we? Yeah, I think you have everything you need to to solve this next one. Let's see, I have I'd the like egg. How, I'd like how much leg room we have in the future. Exactly. I mean, even when a... you when you see photos from airplanes back in the seventies, they had tons of leg room. Hmm. Didn't predict. I didn't predict Spirit Airlines. No. Nope. Although, when I was in the U.S. a decade ago, and I took a JetBlue flight from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, um. There was tons of legroom. Is that still the case, or is JetBlue also uh, no longer I providing? I don't know. I haven't been on JetBlue for a while. I think most airlines reduced legroom. You now have to pay for it. Um, if you want it, you pay extra. So each each seat has an additional price, unless it's the uh, the really squished ones. But we were lucky to go. Um, to the conference, uh, you know, could fly, you know, the conference is willing to give us like low extra. So we had um, more space. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Oh, it's over. Should we go to Seattle or should we go somewhere else? Oh, so you, could you, you could, can you do it in Seattle? I guess you should go to Seattle and, and finish there, but can you, I can't remember if you can do the, the, the puzzle thing with the getting your supplies from Seattle. Let's see. First of all, we have the two headed squirrel, which always freaked me out. A lot of things in this game freaked me out as a kid. question was is the egg in the ham in the microwave an homage to the hamster I said yeah i think so um it's like i wanted to do something funny with the microwave again wait right harris cooper saying jet blue is considered premium experience flight now wasn't it really? a low cost air airline yeah it's pretty low cost Okay, where to? Mm. You want to take so control, get, David? You, so you didn't get to do what you... You didn't do anything. Do we have peanuts? 
No. You want us to take um, a flight and do everything flight related? Yeah, if you can. But I don't know that I could control it fast enough either. Okay, so, so let me do that. You guide me through it. So I need to go, to, have to, go, go to the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah. yeah. What but, happened? I guess a very short flight. Wait, is this thing timed? Mm -hmm. Let's try again. You do have peanuts. Yeah, I have peanuts. But wait, let's go to the bathroom. Open. Okay. Close. Okay. Turn on. Think. Now we have the. Uh... You just get use the toilet paper. That's on oh, the side. Right. Pick up. Okay, now use toilet paper. Yeah, but that could plug it up. Yeah, that's the idea. Turn off. Now give the water on. Wait. Oh, okay. Place it in. Okay. It's going to overflow. Yep, yep, yep. Good. All buttons are leave. Use it now? Yeah, take it. Now leave it. Walk out. Did you already push the call button? No, I just push the call button. Okay. Do the, yeah, do the egg. You also didn't predict uh, uh, airplane security. <laughs> well, it may have been true for 1997, but not for 2007. Right. Okay. You want to take control sign? No! You finished this part. <laughs> you finished this game. Okay, now what? This is... This used yep. to be my least favorite puzzle because there was time. This is the one puzzle that used to get me to restart the game a thousand times. So, get a seat cushion. I think you have to pick up the one in the front. Okay. Right. Okay. And okay. we have a lighter. And okay. open every open every one of the overheads. It doesn't make any difference what order you're in. The last one you open is the one that's going to have the yeah. thing you want. <laughs> so you, you always feel like you're unlucky. I think that's it, right? That's all you get. Oxygen tank, pillow, cigarette lighter. Yeah. Lighter, oxygen tank, cushion. And we got the yeah. peanuts. Okay. Yeah. We're good to go. Do you remember that part? This part? Uh, I don't want to kill the squirrel. I know that I have to give the peanuts, but uh, yeah, you could you can give the peanuts now, right? Yeah, but you can pick the branch. I remember that much. You can pick up the yeah. branch. If you, if but you, I'm not sure. If you use the branch on the squirrel on the hole before the squirrel goes away, you kill the squirrel. So you definitely want to. Give him the peanuts first. Oh, 
How did you come up with the two-headed squirrel? I don't remember that. <laughs> Use two-headed squirrel with peanuts. Yeah, because that is good karma, right? When I go meet yeah. the guru and he's like trying to see my aura, whatever. And I don't remember what, well, I guess I get to. Is that? Let me hear my dark, dark barking dog. I got them outside. My dog's barking now. I can't hear it. You see? The Zoom noise cancellation is great. <laughs> Wait, is anyone else supposed to use the, the branch with the... Reed Harris Cooper is saying, why is the cursor so lagged? That was the game. Yeah, it is. It is a little bit, you know, I'm trying to remember most of it, but I, I do admit that I'm nervous because of the live stream. It's like I'm not. Oh, fun times, fun times, fun times. This is. Uh... Let's see. I have to use the lighter, right? But not for long. Yes, it's just going to burn me, I think. Hang on. So I click, and sometimes I don't even know if it actually clicks the command. Yeah, you also predicted double click. <laughs> when you use something, when you use something on something, and you you click use, and then that object, and then the other object you're supposed to use it on. But when you use something by itself, then you click use and then double click. David Fox is the Nostradamus of the games industry. Oh, that's right. I need the nest. Where the heck is the nest? Sorry. Somewhere. Was it somewhere down here? Mm -hmm. I think maybe to the left a little bit. How many iterations did this game have before it was released? Someone says at the top. I mean, you can start probably when you write the script and you create, um, you know, the golden path of Zach doing all of the things required to finish the game. But well, there, how do you add a, to that? But there, there was a initial was a game design doc, which I don't remember how big it was. I don't think I have it still. Um, probably somewhere between 30 and 50 pages, which kind of generally had all the locations and the characters and types of puzzles you're supposed to do. Um, and I think we then we did like a, a, a chart, you know, like the puzzle dependency chart to kind of get an idea of where the blockages might be and make sure that the game could flow with enough options to do stuff. And then we, we, there was no dialogue in the script. I mean, in the, in the design doc that was all done as we coded. So we just knew there's supposed to be a cutscene here and we would write the cutscene. Um, and then it was just really doing it. So we, I don't remember if we had temporary art. I don't think we did that. I think we were just waiting for the art to come in and we would implement it.
Remember that there's, do you shelve the branch? That's right. So the, the branch goes in the fire pit, right? Oh, if you do that, you're going to kill the squirrel. Don't do that. The what? Don't do that. You'll kill the squirrel. So what am I supposed to do? I, branch, I have to use it. The branch goes in into the fire pit. Oh, that's right. That's right. I can use the branch. I forgot that. That's right. You actually can use the, the thing on the nest. Yeah, if you could do it. Can you can use you the branch the on the can you use the branch on the nest? I don't remember now. I mean, I thought the squirrel might be nicer to you since you gave it peanuts, but I don't remember. But I already gave it peanuts. Yeah. So here ATM is telling us what to do. Get the tree branch, find the bird nest. Oh, the bird nest is different than the squirrel nest. So the bird nest is high. Maybe you added some AI to the squirrel. And in the 35 years that have passed since the release of this game, that AI evolved into sentient being. And so nowadays the, the squirrel doesn't adhere to your to the usual puzzle solutions. OK, so ATM reminds us that the bird nest is high. Mm -hmm. So you want to first, first and you have to use the branch to get the Here it is, bird the abandoned bird nest, yeah. OK, so use the branch to get that. Got it. Then both, I think both the branch and the bird nest go into the pit. I remember this being one of the longest commands in the game, isn't it? Because you have to put everything there. We have to find the thing in the dark again. I love the fact that Sai, just like me, was traumatized by the what is verb because she's doing use the thing on the inventory item instead of the other way around. Because you don't want to try to find it again or try to guess where it is. Because if you click uh, on the wrong place, then then you have to restart the. Yeah, verb. we change this. We cha definitely change this later. Yay. Now we're wow. wow, it looks so different in this version. This is how David I don't think they do ATM machine, the keyboard shortcuts. So, can you go to the right? Can you go to the right and draw, draw the symbol on the door? I did get the crayons. It's pretty nice that you remember the walkthrough for this game, David. The, th the stuff I don't remember are the mazes and the, the best order to do stuff. I definitely don't remember that. Maybe we should speed run this game. Wait, I wonder Has what the world tried record. To do that? Yeah, I want to check out the world record for Zach McCracken. Take a guess, David. Mm -hmm. uh, hour and 45 minutes. Jeez. I was supposed to do something here, but I can't remember what it was because I yeah, know that I can't just. What is that? What is that little red thing look like? Look familiar it's a to sensor, you. but yeah. What? Where have you seen something like that before? Thirty minutes and thirty-seven Good. seconds. Do I wow. use the remote control? 
Yeah. This is the best. I remember this humor. Speak up, no, speak up, oh, whatever. You just pick it up? Yeah. And I think this is the same way that you get to Mars, isn't it? To one of these caverns or something? No, that's the Mayan cavern, I think. So you can't use this blue crystal because you don't know how to use it yet, right? I mean, if you try using it, you, you have know, to learn. He yeah. just, I think he just faints, like spins and and doesn't can't do anything. He's back to the airport. Wait, do we have enough money? Hmm. Do we? While you were away, I was going places. Literally. You were going places? Oh, no. Oh, we have money. Okay. Awesome. That's why I like selling the butter knife, the plant butter knife. He mostly is suggesting that you use the keyboard shortcuts um, instead of having to pick up, you know, like I know there's key keyboard shortcuts for each verb mm -hmm. rather than having to poke on them. I think symbol with part you use the same keyboard shortcuts. Mm. Did you buy the book yet? Nope. I tried to avoid salesmen. <laughs> but you need it. You need that for another puzzle. I always felt an easy to get the cash card, by the way. I'm like, where the heck does he keep the thing? The Thank card? you, Ray Cooper. T42, the meaning of life. So what now? I could go back to the apartment, but I know I need to unlock any now, I think. Yeah, that would be a good thing to do next. So how long did it take you to finish the game? Finish Zach? Was it years it or months? About, I think it was about maybe nine months of production, maybe a month or two of design, maybe two or three months of design. Under a year, I think. And back then, since you didn't have any producers, how did you decide that the game was ready to ship? I'm not talking in terms of uh, bugs or, or playtesting. In terms of content, when was enough when, enough? Well, that got locked down pretty early. I mean, we weren't, we knew how much, how many rooms and what all the puzzles were. So really the rest of it was just fixing bugs. And um, I'd say the last two or three months at least were maybe adding sound effects, adding music, adding fixing bugs, but not doing new art or new animation because there isn't much animation. And just, you know, finding things that play testers were having issues with. Daniel in the chat says, I didn't get very far in this game at age seven. Me neither. Hmm. 
your 140 percent of your goal. What was your goal for the for your fundraising? Three hundred dollars. Wow. So we've got um round we almost reached the, the two hour mark. If you guys have any questions for David or for Sai, now's the time to ask them. And in the David meantime, is a cool kid here. <laughs> Just here to break things. <laughs> You know, I, I always forgot. I actually, you know, I don't have one of the Groucho Marx uh, glasses, but I did do. <laughs> this is so silly. Um, I did kind of design my own for the stream, and I completely forgot. I actually saw it when I got the document. Uh, See that? This is, this is like the silliest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> should have worn it at the beginning of the live stream. I know, right? You could have finished the game in 30 minutes and 37 <laughs> seconds. Hey! Know, right? <laughs> now we're talking, see? <laughs> oh, Screenshot. <this> great. <laughs> speaking, speaking of the, the original Zach memorabilia, in our last conversation, David, it was, I think, two weeks before they announced the Zach McCracken Limited Run Games Collector's Edition. And mm. I asked you whether or not there would be one. And then they announced it. And you weren't aware that they announced it. So yeah, eventually... I, I, I didn't know anything about it. They didn't talk to us or me. Did, did they at least offer you a complimentary copy? No. Limited run games. <laughs> yeah, it's it, you know I would have been happy to sign some too if they had contacted me. I don't think they have oh anything against you. Uh, regarding the questions about Gabriel Knight IP, um, yeah. I'm not so sure much of anything is going to happen. The deal just got finalized. Yeah. And usually, believe it or not, you guys, when we worked on Gabriel Knight, um, it took us almost like a year, perhaps longer than a year, give or take, just to deal with the legal technicalities of it. I have no idea how bad it probably was for Return to Monkey Island to actually even happen, considering that Disney is also another company that is, you know, known to be <laughs> a little bit square in that regard. But all of these ordeals when it comes to legal stuff, uh, IP ownership, because what you get given is a license. And based upon that license is when you you get very limited or specific uh, things that you can or cannot do regarding the, the IP. Um, and for example, we had we had a commercial license for Gabriel Live, but it was limited. Most of it is just, you know, we work with Activision for that. So I don't know. I I don't see that happening any moment soon if it's if it is to happen. But Microsoft bought Microsoft bought Sierra, and now that the deal is finalized, and uh... well, it bought Activision, and Activision is the owner now for now the owner of the Sierra catalog of games. But yeah, it is it is something. Daniel, it's really complicated. All those things are very complicated. We actually had to have a. An attorney and everything to even explain things to us because it's not as simple as people think it is. Like there's a lot of negotiation and talking, at least for an ED studio, like what we did. Well, it usually is complicated and it usually involves lawyers. Well, but, but I believe, like I don't know, correct. Well, I don't, I don't think David can talk about much of this because you, we do sign all these coaches and for all this stuff. But ideally, you're supposed to have a specific amount of time and specific, you know, liaison for all of this. And I think Lucasfilm did have. Craig and all the people in place to to handle that kind of stuff. So it's it's a different scenario with studios with other kind of studios like that. David, did you ever think that these huge doing. corporations would buy LucasArts and Sierra? Disney buying LucasArts and Microsoft buying Sierra. Yeah. Right, tell me the give me the question again. If you ever thought that these two gaming companies, Sierra and LucasArts, would be bought 
by these huge corporations like Microsoft and Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't think LucasArts would get closed down after they got bought either. Um, that was, that was sad. Um, even though I hadn't been there for 15 years at the time, um, still felt kind of like, you know, there was a, a, a home that you had, you know, this is where I, where I started my game industry time and didn't realize that the company was gone. It was, was really sad. Um, I, I guess it was kind of, it was fun to work on Return of Monkey Island and have that connection again, but very different in a very different way. It's really a marketing. I mean, it's really um, licensing. It is. You're, yeah. It how, is much, really, how much of a connection do you actually have? It's it's a licensing well, company at the moment. Yeah. Or... Well, I didn't personally. I know that they were constantly in touch with um, with Ron because um, everything everything needed approvals. So, mm -hmm. but I, we were we were fortunately kept out of the loop. Um, we could just focus on creating the game and. So I didn't have to deal with any of that. See, I see a question here. How has your process for creating games changed in these years? Do you still use the same process with room, list, puzzle design, pizza parties, or is it different now? That's from Duck Made of Wood. Um, it's Hello, pretty Ducky. different. Some neutral. <laughs> the the big difference the last two games I worked on the last three games I worked on were all pretty virtual in terms of the team, so no no pizza parties um, unless everyone pizza goes party. out and gets their own pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, David the, is also <laughs> Um Oh my goodness! I say I have a mustache and having this fuzzy thing under my nose is very tickly. Um, the, the big thing, which Ron does, which I think is great is to essentially proto, not really, I guess, prototype the game using like a wireframe version of the art, um, using really, um, rough versions of each room. So we could wire up the entire game without putting any money into art resources and getting a sense whether we need all those rooms or there's rooms missing or puzzles missing, and actually walk around and then start doing the art after that happens and then do the art in in stages so that you know you do the rough version of real art and then a more polished version another polished version so you're not putting a lot of energy into rooms that might get cut um back when the art was like that um not much of an issue because it didn't take that long to create that um, but when you have you know really high resolution, beautiful art that we do now that there's a lot of energy and time that goes into it. Uh, Ozzy Ezra. There's another asks, question. There's right. another question here that I, I completely looked over. Reed Harris is asking, David, is there any new games in the pipeline? Because he was asking also for me, like if there is anything that I'm going to say, like a book art or something. Maybe. Yeah. Ron Gilbert has been trickling <laughs> me to get something like that. So I, I might look into that. Um I I answered it in the chat. Um I'm working on um there's a game I did 10 years ago called Rubeworks, which is based on Rube Goldberg's cartoons. If you're not American, you may not know who he is, but he's kind of responsible for crazy chain reaction machines you might see in YouTube videos or in movies. Um by creating cartoons like that in the 1930s and 40s. And we licensed his cartoons. He did a game 10 years ago that showed, um, you know, where you essentially solved a bunch of these puzzles. And it's on, still out for on Steam and on mobile. And when I decided I wanted to do a VR game, since we did that one in, in Unity, um, I figured, okay, this should not be that difficult to take that game and convert it. So we started doing it in 2020 and then got totally, side, so totally sidetracked when I worked on Return to Monkey Island for two years. And I'm now back on working on the game. So that's my main my main project right now. Not doing anything with um, with Ron at this point. Um, I think he's still working on his... his, his, his RPG his, game. Yeah, his RPG. 
So that's that's my answer. And I, I also mentioned in the chat that if you have a Quest 2 or later, like a Quest 3 or Quest Pro, and you're interested in beta testing, then contact me. And we have slots available for that. So is that, uh, I think, give me control for a sec, Sai. I think Ozzy Azworth asks, uh, asked uh, a question about how does it feel knowing that this game is still beloved and played by gamers to this day? Did you think it would stand the test of time? We we kind of all assumed that our games would have a two or three year life lifespan. That um, you know you do especially for you know plat for the platforms that went away like you know Atari's lasted for a few years and then the Commodore's lasted for a few years and bigger PCs would you know keep on changing their OSs and graphics and everything else and and that would be, that'd be the end of those games and we never considered um that there would be these emulators that would come out that where you could play you know, emulated version on an emulated version of a game and and have them as long as you wanted. So I, I didn't realize that people were still playing. I'm going to take this off just because it's easier to talk without. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't realize that people would continue doing that until I went to, I guess, my first conference to give a talk in Oslo in 2004. And my host came up and showed me, I think it was Zach, the C64 version of Zach, Zach on a comp, on a Nokia cell phone. And it had the little joystick that you could move around and make things happen. And it worked. And it was, it was an emulated version from the C64. And people, because I didn't understand why people wanted me to talk at this conference, like 15 years after the, the games came out and you know, everyone knew the games because they've been playing emulated versions. So, so the answer is no, I had no idea. And it still blows me away to think that. I think that's probably the same for everyone else who worked on those games. Uh, yeah, but the, 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 the interesting thing is that you all thought that the games would have a lifespan of two, three years. But in LucasArts games, the humor is always timeless. So you never use pop culture references that would date the game like five years after or six years after the, the game was released. All of the humor in all of the LucasArts games is pretty timeless. So you may say that you thought it would have a, a two or three year lifespan but you've worked on these games and put your heart and soul into them in a way that would make them the classics that they are. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think it was more the technical part of it that we didn't think would, would survive as opposed to the content, you know, that, that people would just throw away their computers. And I don't want a Commodore 64. I want, um, you know, PC with... CGA graphics or and then our better sound card and advancing through their systems and as soon as they got rid of their old system they, the games would be orphaned so um that was the surprise yeah Christian Wolf Nielsen also says that Zach is his favorite game I think that Zach fans all over the world aren't vocal enough so that we'll finally get our um, Zack Special Edition or Zack 2. Hmm. I think I need to talk to Craig Derrick again. <laughs> Be my guest. Well, it's just that all of these conversations are usually not about the amount of fandom that might be supporting. It's about how visible it is in terms of return. That's that's the thing. I cannot talk much about that because, um, but it it is. I mean, it's lovely that that fans all over the world kind of support the projects and stuff. But it it ultimately depends to how much the IP holder wants to give in or 
that happened, basically, so to speak. But it always, what moves it is money. Really. Actually, actually, Zach McCracken fans should be less vocal than usual. And then we can convince Disney that the, the IP is worthless. And then yeah. they can sell it back to David. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have an epic plan right there, actually. It's I, I have a feeling likely to happen. <laughs> I have a feeling that Disney has never sold IP in their in their existence or hundred years. Yeah, yeah, they come have on. Never. Every, it's every, just, every, it just expires on them. They don't, yeah, they don't... It just, or it goes goes into the vault. And we Most got companies to, have like that. Yeah, Annie and I got to do a, a design for a theme park overlay game for Disney um about it was it 2007. We actually did a couple. And one of them, they decided to implement when they didn't. And the one they didn't implement may end up, who knows, maybe in 10 years, someone will come across it in the archive and say, hey, we should do something like this now. There is an Easter egg here. I'm trying to remember how I, hang on, I think it's on the phone, isn't it? Check like the plant. Hang on, it's, not, it's on the phone. In the meantime, I'll read the, the texts for the donations themselves. First of all, thank you everyone for donating to this noble cause. We have any change. Oh, that's right. I called it from the bedroom. Uh, yeah, there was so a question you... there. Sorry. There was a question there. More beer games. Hi, Stacey. It's my best beer Uh, He was this king. What is your favorite location in the game? One of my favorite locations in the game is Katmandu. I love Katmandu. That's when we get to learn how to use the, we get to learn how to use the crystal and we control the yak. <laughs> you can chew and you can pull. Yeah, the, the, the yak Easter egg was like really fun to do. Yeah, it was so much fun. I don't know how many people found that. So back then we I do. Did. <laughs> I love that. It. It's persistence. I love that. Um, someone asked me before whether I would do another Zach, and I think having, especially after having worked on Monkey Island, you know, being much more aware of what is involved to do a modern adventure game and what went into it and how much energy it took out of Ron really as the, the lead for the, for the game and, and, and Dave also, it's hard to picture doing that and willingly. Um, on the other hand, if, if there were, if the license became available and there was some group that were going to, was going to do it, I would love to be involved in it, but I don't think I would want to project lead it in the same way that um, Ron project led uh, return to Monkey Island. It would be fun to see it made. Thomas found the yak Easter egg. A lot of people found the yak Easter egg. Yeah. I think that was the biggest controversial thing. We're saying, should we leave this in? Is anyone going to get really upset if we, we leave it in? So that was the, the fun thing about games from back in the 80s and 90s. You could actually get to the final day of production and think about a joke and add it to the game or mm -hmm. change something or I don't know, comment out things that you want to remove at the last minute. It was the wild west of gaming. Yeah. We didn't get a lot of supervision um, over our stuff. Um, we didn't have sensors. So we could, you know, it was more self regulated, I think. You know, we knew that we were definitely keeping everything PG. Um, there was someone who was, Ozzy asked if um, this game is officially in the same universe as Maniac Mansion. And I kind of, I mean, with, their, with mm. at least through Easter eggs, they all kind of exist in the same universe. Like, you know, there's, with posters and objects, so there, there's a, which version of Zach has a rotofoil on the um down on the Caponian area on the on the shelf. Um so we would throw things in there to kind of tie them all together. And that was something we would always do. 
Um, but I don't know if they're in the, I, I guess they're kind of in the same universe or parallel universes. Well, Monkey Island is in the same universe as Loom because of Cobb and the Scumbar. Mm -hmm. So right, right. That's that's kind of a breaking the fourth wall kind of a yeah. same universe thing. So if you no, but with, out game, with Zach and Maniac, um, you'd have posters of Maniac mentioned in Zach, and then you'd have posters of Zach in later versions of Maniac mentioned in the right. arcade and room. Then there's the um, the gag with the with the can of gas in the mm -hmm. locker in, in Mars. And um, so, you know, it was, but it was more for fun than clearly anything you need. Oh, also Maniac Mansion. If you look through the telescope, mm -hmm. there's the, the jaggy monster from Resident Evil. Yeah, Tractilus. exactly. But you see. That's how I found out about the behind jaggy lines. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to read the the, uh, the comments from the donations. Again, thank you everyone for being so generous. Um, MDQP says, Savage Daniel, you should... How he crack the whip with Paul. Okay. CJ, thank you very much for your generous donation. My gift to you, the CWC family during those challenging times. Love you all so much. Sasha writes... Daniel, you are so much braver than I would ever be in that situation. Let's cherish our escapism for a happy time here together. Thank you, Ray Cooper. He didn't write a comment. Dallas and Ozzy Ezreth, sending love and support your way. Thank you for taking the time to stream with us today. Stay safe and keep up the good work. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So let's save. How far do we get? How far do we de did we get, Sai? We are, well, I I forgot to do the application before taking, going to the airplane, airport. So I don't know how to trigger that, but we did the square element. We got the first crystal. Have we left? The, did you leave the country? I think you stayed in the United that's, States. That's what right? triggers it, right? Which? Oh, I'm not sure. No, the mailbox. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to. Uh, I think it might just be a time trigger. I think you have to leave for a certain time. time? I thought there was events. Thank you, Jules. Mm. Well, guys. Thank you so much for joining me both today. Thank you, David, for taking the time to play this new game we just found out. <laughs> it's Zach McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders by a genius game developer called David Something. And back in, you know, back in the day, I think I told you that in, in my conversation with you, back in the day, whenever we'd see the names of the people who worked on these games, we considered them as gods. A graphic adventure by David Fox. I mean, <laughs> David Fox must be the coolest person in the world. And apparently he, he is. is. Yeah. <laughs> We're both agree, yes. Yeah. So oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for creating this game, which was um, either the first or second adventure game that most of us over here played, the ones who actually lived back in the 80s. Um, and are still young, at least at heart. And and so thank you for creating this game. And thank you for working on all of the awesome games that you did. Even as director of operations on Loom, you left your mark. <laughs> you didn't so, know that you work on Loom. I didn't. Wow. I, 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 was, I didn't no, work was on Loom, but I, I, was, on... I got kicked up into middle management for in 1990 so for a year that was during the first monkey island game during loom and probably during the first iteration of of the dig david fox the only person who uh, considers promotion as a bad thing 
It's just being what? humble. It's just you consider being promotion as a bad thing. <laughs> you know, most no people would like to get promoted to director uh, of operations. No, it, it was not as fun as doing games. It's like I know. people, I had, I had to solve everyone's David, problems and not David get David is a creative enjoy. at heart. Yeah. A hundred percent a creative at heart. Loves sure. doing the games. Does not want to do anything with management. Yeah. <laughs> it is the best part, I'm going to admit it. The creative part is always the best. The publishing end of things is like, oof, I work in publishing and some days I don't even know why. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a game developer over here and someone who works in publishing. So I think Zach McCracken too is just, you know, one of it is the... just so difficult to do these things. I know everybody would love to have more in the IP, but it's just like just to get the conversation started. Those are Don't worry, such... we'll get the conversation started. Um, first thing I'm going <laughs> to do is I'm going to send the entire executive staff of Disney this live stream and let them know that uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're going to they're going to be like, "What the fuck are these thoughts?" <laughs> yeah, and the first thing we'll get is a cease and desist letter for playing their game on stream. Stop <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> well, again, thank you guys for joining me. I hope we can do this again sometime soon. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is a dream come true to be able to spend time with both of you here today. I'm really humbled. Well, with <laughs> David, with me, it's not exactly a dream come true. You were a poopy head, but I still like you. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm always <laughs> a poopy super. head. <laughs> And thank you, everyone, for watching and joining and donating. And I'll thank see you, you everyone. guys, hopefully, on Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.